All right, guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about buck converters. Now, we're not going to go too deep into the weeds of how they work and everything, uh, just because it would be a multiple video series to do that. I may do that in the future, but for now, we're just going to kind of go into implementing a buck converter into your like Arduino project that's going to be an automotive thing. So it's going to be the, the, the whole gist of what we're going to talk about here. We're going to also discuss why you might want to use a buck converter versus using a linear voltage regulator. Um, and that'll actually be the first part of this video that we discuss. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor, JLC PCB. All right, so before we really get into this video, let's talk about today's sponsor, JLC PCB, who was kind enough to send us our circuit boards and sponsor this video. So everybody knows that you can get PCBs manufactured for just $2 from JLC PCB, but they also do assembly service. They have over 200,000 parts in stock uh, in really you might go, well, but how do I know if they have my parts that I want to use in stock? So you go to jlcpcb.com slash parts and you can actually search what's in stock. So that way you might want to adjust your design to use what they have in stock that does the same thing as the other one on your bomb before you upload your bomb. That way you don't have to order a whole reel of components. So definitely check out jlcpcb and check out their assembly service. It starts at $8 with a less than one cent per joint on there. So yeah, let's get back into the video now and discuss why you might want to use a buck converter versus using a linear voltage regulator because a linear voltage regulator has an advantage of only having to have like the two little capacitors that go with it the uh, input and output capacitor and the voltage regulator which is pretty convenient uh, a whole lot less than uh, all the stuff you have to have on your buck converter now there's some extra stuff on here uh, this this buck converter right here has the bare minimum that you need for it to work um, but we'll we'll be looking at this one today so your learn linear voltage regulator right here only has you know these three components. You have the voltage regulator and two capacitors, and that's it. That that's all it needs to work. Uh, but the big disadvantage you have, which we'll take a look at some data sheets here, is the thermal characteristics of a linear voltage regulator and a buck converter. A linear voltage regulator like your LDL one 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 seven, which is what we were just looking at on there, uh, has a thermal resistance junction to case of fifteen and thermal resistance junction to ambient of 120. Uh, so you're really, and that's Celsius per watt. Um, so you really uh, can quickly hit that limit because uh, this footprint is not easy to get a, uh, a heat sink for in the first place. So this 15, you can kind of just ignore and really you be looking at uh, your thermal to ambient here of 120. Yes, you can get a little bit of your junction to case with uh, some tricks of making a heat sink out of your circuit board that's soldered on, but eh, you, you really kind of more of in this range. And same with your LM317, uh, which is a much more common uh, linear voltage regulator. It has a better, has better thermal characteristics. Uh, but you can take a look here. Uh, you still very quickly will reach that thermal limit before you reach that one and a half amps that it's rated to. So, you know, your, your butt converter, you, you have a 6.5 um, Celsius per watt, so much, much lower um, thermal characteristics. That's one of your big advantages to using a buck converter. Something you need to take in consideration, though, are some of the disadvantages, too, of you might have some high-frequency switching noise. You may have a little more ripple, depending on your design. So you do need to take those into consideration, but a lot of our hobby projects, that's not quite, uh, quite as big of a deal of having some ripple. I, I, I really don't think that many people doing an Arduino project are going to run into that that limit and that heat is a bigger factor. And so now let's actually take a look at some of the designs and these tricks to, to put one of these together. So we'll take a, a quick glance at what I designed here and then move on to how I actually came to that design. So we are in Altium here and we'll take a look at the design here. Uh, a lot of this stuff you, you're not going to be, you're not really going to have to consider on just a regular just doing just a buck converter, but for automotive, which is what this channel really focuses in on, there's a little more you need to take into consideration, which this goes to both using an LDL or, uh, well, a linear voltage regulator or a switching voltage regulator, is you, you've got to take into consideration transient voltages. Um, so this TVS diode right here will suppress those transient voltages. Uh, if you were to try to make a product that you want to 
actually put on the market and get certified, uh, you're going to need to take care of the high frequency switching noise from a switcher. So you're, you're going to need a like a LC filter right here, which is what I have, uh, to filter out any of that high frequency switching noise. And then you're going to need some reverse polarity protection. That's not necessarily for certification, but just in general when you're doing automotive projects, you should always put in reverse polarity protection, uh, even if it's not something that the idiot can hook up wrong putting it into the car, like, hey, this plug, you can't plug it in wrong. Yeah, but they can still switch their battery and put their battery in backwards, and now they've fried all their electronics, which is why reverse polarity protection is integrated into almost everything in the automotive world. So definitely something to take into consideration here is you're gonna need some TVS protection and some reverse polarity protection, and you may need a, an LC filter. Now we're only running at one and a half amps, so I probably didn't need this LC filter that much on here, but I wanted to make it to do another test in the future where I have one of these assembled with the LC filter on and one without it and see how much high frequency noise we really see uh, from a small uh, buck converter like this. Because this is only uh, one and a half amps. So this is very comparable to that uh, that LM317 because that's rated to one, one and a half amps. And you, with a with a heat sink, you can easily do that one and a half amps on the, uh, the LM317 because it comes in that larger package that's much easier to get heat sinks for. Um, so those are definitely some of your considerations to take in. Um, now for the design side, so we, we have a lot going on here. Like we have a soft start circuit here, which this capacitor is gonna set your soft start. Uh, you're gonna have to pick the correct inductor value. Then you have to have the right feedback for your voltage. Uh, it, and it can be kind of tricky as a hobbyist to come up with these things. Um, so let's, let's actually go take a look at how I came up with all of this stuff instead of going into what all these different things are doing and stuff. Because at the hobby level, you may not really need to know uh, how to calculate all this. You just wanna be able to go, hey, I, I want this to work and I, wanna, I don't wanna have to do all the math. And Texas Instruments has some pretty cool tools for that. So let's go take a look at that. So we are on Texas Instruments website, taking a look at the LM3100, which is the uh, switcher that we're using. Uh, if you're wondering why I use this switcher, it's because I got it for free. So, so uh, I had bought some tools from somebody and they gave me a bunch of components when I bought the tools and this was in the bin. So these are actually from, uh, these are actually from 2009. Uh, so I have them and there's a global chip shortage. So I figured I would use what I had instead of ordering something random for this video. Um, so yeah, you are on the Texas Instruments website and you go, okay, I need to read this data sheet and figure it out. Well, let's scroll down a little bit further and you'll see Webbench Designer for LM310 and this will get us going. So we want five volts and our input voltage, since we're working with a car, is going to be from like 11 volts to 12 volts and we want to be able to output one and a half amps. So let's open up this design. And now Web Tools is making this and it already has told us everything we need. So then I just take this and translate it into my, uh, my design that I was doing. So you'll, you'll notice that our R on is the same here. Our uh, RE in is the enable pins the same. And our voltage divider that gives us our feedback is the same. Uh, we have the same inductor. But here's the other nice thing. So then you get a bill of materials that's telling us every component they're using, how they came up with that low price of it's only $2.80 to put this together. So it's pretty inexpensive to set, set up this buck converter um, if you go with their bomb and order all of these components. Now, I, I did run into the inductor that they used. Uh, I wasn't able to find that anywhere, so I had to use a different one. But um, it's still a, a really great tool and it gives you pretty much everything you're gonna need. It gives you a recommended uh, board layout that's gonna help with thermal characteristics and switching noise and really kind of get optimize everything there. Uh, and then you got your schematic here. So it makes it really easy for a hobbyist to go, I wanna use this. So you can just go to Texas Instruments website and pick out a switcher that they offer that's kind of in that range that you want. And these simple switchers like this, you noticed on the schematic, let me go back to it. On the schematic, there's no MOSFET on the output. That's because the MOSFET is integrated into the IC itself. So I don't have to have a MOSFET out here. I don't have a high and low uh, MOSFET switching on there. I, it's, it's already integrated into the IC here. So uh, that, that saves us from having to have a MOSFET on there. But the, it, it's definitely, um, 
a lot easier for a hobbyist to use these Texas Instruments ones because you just go in there. So another thing that Texas Instruments offers, let's take a look at it. Another thing you may have noticed when I scrolled down is P-Spice for TI. So you can actually get P-Spice for free from Texas Instruments. Now there are some limitations, you're kind of locked into, you. there's only Texas Instruments I see in there and uh, you, you can't import like a, a ROM or a, a somebody else, like a analog devices. Uh, but yeah, you can use P-Spice for TI and actually get an idea of what your input current's gonna be and how much noise and all of that. You get, get an idea of your ripple and everything uh, right there in P-Spice. So that way it, it'll help you out. So let's take a look at P-Spice and see what it looks like. Okay, so we'll take a really quick look at P-Spice. I'm not gonna get too much into the weeds on this. Here is a already made up um, model that Texas Instruments included in here. So I was able to just pull pull this up. I didn't have to make it myself uh, for this particular IC that I'm using. So uh, we did that and I went ahead and ran the uh, thing because uh, with my recording, uh, it's a lot really uh, kind of bogs down the computer. So I went ahead and ran it ahead of time. And you can see um, we're running kind of like a perfect world model on our 12 volts. There's no drop or anything, but re in reality, because there is some resistance from your power supply and stuff, this isn't going to be perfect, uh, you know, 12 or 14 volts, whatever I set it to uh, in real life. Uh, and then you can see our maximum current that we're drawing comes out to right over two amps, it looks like, from the, um, fr from the, on the input side and our um, output load maxes out at the one and a half amp range. Um, and well, that's actually more like one and a quarter. Um, it, yeah, max out one and a quarter and we're just under five volts that we're getting on our output there. So that gives us an idea of what we'll see. Um, and if we adjust that, um, if we if we were to tweak uh, this a little bit better, we could get it closer to uh, five volts um, on there. So let's go ahead and actually take a look uh, at the real world one. All right, so let's actually just take a look at this buck converter working. Uh, so also what we have going on here is the benchtop power supply providing 14 volts here. And then I have a electronic load per, uh, providing a load of one and a half amps when I turn it on. So right now it is running. So we can see that we get have our five volts. So there we go, we have five volts. And then I'm going to turn the load on at one and a half amps. Okay. And we're still regulating to five volts. So I'm gonna let that run for just a second. If this was a, um, one of those linear voltage regulators, this would be getting incredibly hot right now and I wouldn't be able to touch it. Uh, neither our inductor nor our chip right here getting hot. It will eventually start to warm up on me. I've let it run for a while and it does start to get a little uncomfortable to touch, but it doesn't get so burning hot that you just can't handle it. So uh, th this runs nice and cool. So you, if we're having heat dissipation issues, if, especially if we're like in an enclosed space in a car where ambient te temperature can get higher than 30 and Celsius, we're talking, um, and we have this heavy load on it, you're, you're really gonna want to consider using a buck converter like this. Uh, now that digital load, uh, I know y'all haven't seen it on my workbench yet. It's, it's a new piece of equipment. I will be doing a video on it here shortly. So definitely, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe. So that way you can check the video out on this uh, electronic load that I just got. And then we'll uh, do some other testing. I, I wanted to show Ripple, but I guess I got something going on with my wiring here in the office and uh, I no longer have ground here. And uh, it's, I have more than 500 millivolts of Ripple without it even turned on. <laughs> so uh, definitely something going on with my, uh, in my lab here that I need to uh, fix. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to run a new ground rod into the ground here next to the office to, to fix this issue. But yeah, it's still, it, it's warm, but it's not so hot that I can't touch it. And I'm still running it at that, uh, that uh, amp and a half there. So that's really it for the buck converter. Uh, I will have files up on the GitHub, so that way you can download them if you just wanna make this one, this exact one yourself to check it out, to use it. Uh, there are other uh, simple switchers similar to this that can go 
up to like three amps instead. So might want to look at doing a design yourself uh, for a little more current output than the one and a half amps. Like, like I said earlier in the video, I only did this one because it's what I had in stock, but uh, I, I, I do want to keep this footprint of it. Uh, there was a lot that I was testing out with this one, which is why it's such a final looking product. Um, so I, I will come out with one later uh, sometime this year that's going to be um, higher current and uh, still have the same footprint. We'll have a 12 volt, uh, like a conditioned 12 volt out, then ground, and then your um, 5 volt out. Uh, that way we can actually utilize this uh, reverse polarity protection to its potential. This is way overkill for what we're doing right here. I could have easily just used one of the, the S1G uh, diodes because two amps, those can handle that. Um, and then that TVS diode and all that. So I'll, I'll keep the same footprint for a future uh, one and have these same uh, terminals coming in. I'll just have a, a three out and a two in on it, uh, on, on the future version of it and try to keep this exact same uh, kind of footprint to it. And so you'll see, uh, I actually printed out the schematic so that way I had it while I was doing assembly. It's really useful to print out your schematics when you're doing assembly so that way you're not having to look at the screen and then come back and look at that. Or And uh, I also generally like to print out the BOM also but this one was such a simple circuit, uh, I didn't bother printing that out. All right, guys, I hope you liked today's video. We really kind of got into just the basics of buck converters. We really didn't get down into the nitty gritty at all here, um, but I still hope you learned something from it, and I will be doing that video here real soon on that electronic load, so expect that to come up soon. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already so that way you don't miss that video. It'll be a good one. We'll get to test out some of these power supplies on it, and we may even take a look at the uh, same buck converter again. But I hope you kind of got some of the little nuances that I was trying to sprinkle in there about, you know, how to integrate something like this into your project that you're kind of doing in an automotive setting. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope you guys liked the video, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.